Hello, my name is Aaron Heinemann, Inorganic Product Line Leader for Perkin Elmer. In today's talk, I'll be talking about laser ablation in mining and a way to simplify sample preparation. During this talk, we'll go over the challenges in analyzing geochemical samples, strategies to overcome these challenges, analytical examples of showing speed versus accuracy, and some conclusions on the technology discussed. Samples are delivered to a lab and ground into a fine powder. Traditionally, this is split into two aliquots, one going to make an x-ray disc by flux fusion, the other going to acid digestion for AA, ICP, or ICP-MS analysis. In these cases, the spectrometer does provide a very stable result and data coming from the system. However, this depends on a lengthy process of digestion using acids, which in some cases may not dissolve all the elements in the method to the same degree. This digestion relies on the operator to identify issues with the digestion or precipitates in the vessel. Acid digestion requires some sort of hot block or other heated digestion system to accelerate the process of digestion. Following analysis, the sample must either be stored, where it may not be stable, or disposed of, which includes neutralization with some sort of base and dilution and this observed disposal. These treatment and energy costs can add up. An alternate approach to traditional sample analysis is the introduction of laser ablation ICPMS. The laser ablation ICPMS analysis protocol entirely removes the acid digestion process, thereby saving all reagent, energetic, regulatory, and labor costs involved. The x-ray disc that is being produced anyway is used in the laser for direct analysis. This results in overall lower costs and positively enhances the bottom line. This slide demonstrates the calibration of a laser ablation ICPMS system, indicating little sacrifice to accuracy and precision. The lithium borate matrix is used to standardize the matrix response and provides three nines correlation coefficients, as well as obtaining part per billion level detection limits. This data shows the accuracy of Nexian laser ablation ICPMS when compared to acid digestions. In addition, it demonstrates the power of EDR, or extended dynamic range of the Nexian ICPMS. Without the ability to dilute analytes with the extended dynamic range capability of the Nexian ICPMS, we wouldn't be able to acquire major element data while acquiring trace elements in the same ablation. So if we look at some of the laser ablation ICPMS automation drawbacks or current drawbacks for in the automation of laser ICPMS. Really the rate limiting step of laser ablation was previously the sample chamber. If you look at the sample chambers that uh, people are using in la laser ablation ICPMS, uh, you can usually fit about five samples in there, maybe 10 and an experienced operator was required to exchange samples every four to 10 analyses. However, we will discuss new technology, how we can automate this. We all have experience with automation for liquid ICPMS analysis, and this is the standard we expect when we mention automation.
In the case of laser ablation, we currently rely on a box or a chamber. And therefore, this relies on an operator to regularly switch sample, analyze reference materials, and standardize laser ablation conditions. This video shows the current approach. Furthermore, this laser ablation box or chamber limits the number of samples in any given batch. Here are some typical 40 mm X ray fusion beads. With those 40 mm beads, a standard ablation chamber of 100 mm can only fit 5 of the beads. If you went to a larger 150 millimeter chamber, you could fit more, but this comes at a cost of extending the chamber purge times, impacting the true throughput of the system. Alternatively, we can cut those beads. However, that's an extra sample and handling step we would like to avoid. One response to these laser ablation ICPMS limitations is the NWR Auto. It can handle from 20 to 2,000 samples using sealing technology to ensure that each sample in standard analysis is totally reproducible and performed under precisely the same conditions. Here you see the NWR Auto carousel used to introduce samples to the laser. On the left are X ray beads and copper pellets are in the carousel to the right. If we review the process without sample automation, you can see that switching out the chamber has a drastic effect on sample throughput. Here is the sample exchange using NWR Auto. With the automation of the sample introduction, sample throughput is increased by a factor of 10. And operator involvement is significantly reduced. So some of the advantages of NWR Auto are rapid sample changeover, a short time to the result, since we don't have to wait for the chamber set up and purge, and a reduction in overall operation complexity. This system can be scaled up to industrial levels. The roboticized system can analyze up to 2,000 samples per day and can be integrated with a barcode reader. All the operator needs to do in this case is add more samples. As many of you may know, zircon dating by quadruple-based laser ablation ICPMS is quite common. Instrument performance and sensitivity is now adequate for aging young zircons. 
The market is moving towards providing rapid screening of large batches of zircons, which in the past was slowed down by the chamber and high resolution ICPMS techniques. Another update to laser ablation ICPMS offering is the dual concentric injector or DCI. It is shown here installed in the Nexium 2000 ICPMS. It has been designed to have a minimum dead volume and spots for particle deposition leading to the injector of the ICPMS. The dual concentric injector reduces washout significantly. By reducing this washout from ablation to ablation, less data is trimmed from the analysis. In addition, a considerable reduction in analysis time can be gained. In this example here, you can see a six second ablation. Prior to using the DCI, the ablation time was about 120 seconds to do the same zircon dating. This slide demonstrates the stability of the six second zircon dating spots analyzed sequentially. In these examples, we are dating the samples using lead 206 and uranium 238. In the first example, the mean age of the sample is 1 billion 66 years plus or minus 13.5 million years. In the second sample, the mean age is 506 years plus or minus 38.29 million years. We all know there is a need to simplify the identification of gold bearing minerals. The bulk measurement gives us the total gold concentration, but no information on the mineral phase that it is associated with. In addition, during some exploration activities, we need fast answers and cannot wait for detailed mapping data. Here, the dual concentric injector was used to image gold distribution and concentrates from periphery style deposits. The faster washout that this introduction system provides results in better resolution in the images. In this case, only small regions need to be imaged to gather enough information on the elemental distribution. Laser ablation ICPMS imaging for exploration work is possible with the DCI device. The DCI gives answers on the mineral phase composition more rapidly than any other introduction for laser ablation ICPMS. Instrumentation is now robust and saves in cost and sample preparation, and imaging can be achieved in with minimal training. Thank you for your time today. Please reach out if you have any questions regarding the materials presented. Have a good day.